In today's gospel, Jesus says, when you are invited, go and take the lowest place so that when the host comes to you, he may say, my friend, move up to a higher position. Then you will enjoy the esteem of your companions at table. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. A week ago, Thursday, I was invited to Holy Trinity Cathedral in New Ulm, Minnesota, to concelebrate an 11 o'clock Mass where three young ladies were going to make their temporary vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience, which was a three-year term. And the reason I was invited is four years ago, I was a spiritual director to one of them. Her name is Janelle, now Sister Anastasia Grace. And going there, I wasn't going to know anyone except one person, Sister Donna Krzmarsik, who's an employee for our diocese. So I plan to just prayerfully enjoy the experience, kind of from the back row, the lowest place. It was my first time ever at the cathedral in New Ulm, so I didn't really know where to go, where I was going to be vesting. And I went into the church and went into the first sacristy and to see if this was where they were. And it was completely empty, no vestments. No, so I thought, well, this isn't the right one. So I went down the steps, and off to my left, I saw a priest coming up the steps with a gold chain, which meant this is a bishop. He was a big one. This was the Archbishop Hebna of St. Paul in Minneapolis. I thought, oh, they're bringing the big guns to this one. And then I, as I was, I thought, well, I know I shouldn't go to the main sacristy for the priest. It's going to be way too busy, especially seeing an Archbishop walking in. But I didn't know where else to go. So I start making my way, and a younger priest, kind priest, saw my confusion because I was exiting the wrong sacristy and heading to another wrong sacristy. And he said, uh, Father, are you looking for where the priests are vesting? And I said, uh, yes, please. And I explained uh, that I didn't know where I was to go, and I was afraid if I went to the main sacristy, the words of Jesus were going to be spoken to me, saying, someone more distinguished than you has been invited. And then I would proceed to the lowest place in embarrassment. So I said, thank you for saving me. And uh, so he directed me to the back church, to the corner, down a hallway, a flight of stairs, into the basement, uh, where my brother priests were vesting, and I didn't know a single one of them, except one, Father Paul Timmerman. I haven't seen him for years. He's the brother of a parishioner I once had. So I, I met him a few times. And, uh, and I quickly, ex after an exchange, a greeting, I quickly explained that while I'm here because one of the sisters, I was a spiritual director for her for only about a year. And it turns out that he was the assistant master of ceremonies. And he says, oh, well, Father Conop, would you, would you like to distribute uh, from the cup at communion time? I thought, oh, yeah. Sure, that's always an honor, you know, to participate and distribute the precious blood. Plus, Sister Anastasia might notice me, you know, that I made it all the way from the cross. Well, um, then Father Timmerman, being an assistant master of ceremonies, needed to give some instruction. So he's like, Fathers, fathers, if I could have your attention for a few directions... Then he explained how the procession was going to go and how we'd gather around the altar for the Eucharistic prayer and how communion was going to be received by us. And, and then he explains the exit. And he says, Bishop Lavoie, after the final blessing, will go to the altar to venerate the altar to kiss it. And you just stay, we we're going to be in the front pews, you just stay in your pews and you just bow where you're at and then he'll come around to the front of the altar to genuflect to the tabernacle. And if you could just genuflect from your place in the pews, and then we will exit via the main aisle two by two. Well, then there was a prayer, and then we all climbed up the flight of stairs and got to the back of church and, and lined up. 
and I was in the procession next to Father Paul Timmerman. And when I saw this procession, there were eight bishops of Minnesota, 20-some priests, all the seminarians at the Diocese of New Ulm has, and of course dozens of dozens of women religious from the Handmaids of the Heart of Jesus. And the, the eight bishops um, were going to be, so there was a ninth actually, eight bishops were in the front two pews and we priests were going to be in the third pew and further back. Well, as the procession went, I ended up in the third pew. Okay, so the first one for priests, and I was on the main aisle with a good view because there were all bishops in the first two pews except one. He was a priest, must be a parochial or a, um, a diocesan administrator who was not a bishop because he didn't put on one of those miters and block my view. So I really had like a, a, a great spot. Well, then it got to be communion time, and I distributed the precious blood, which meant I was the last to be seated. And as I was going to my spot, I realized it was taken. And there was no one there to tell that priest, give your position to a, a more distinguished guest, Father Conipa, and you may go with embarrassment to the lowest place. And I thought, well... It's not like my name's on that spot, you know, so... And the whole pew three was full. So I walked past pew three, pew four, pew five, and then pew six, which is the last pew, and the last spot behind a pillar. <laughs> so did I see the rest of the Mass? I did with my left eye. And then there were announcements and announcements and announcements and final prayer. And then we get to the blessing. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Now, a half bow would have hit my head against this pillar. It was that close. And I thought, no problem, quarter bow. <laughs> and then, after the final blessing and the dismissal, uh, the bishop goes up to venerate, kiss the altar, and we're all supposed to bow. And I thought, no can do. Because the priest next to me never budged at all. So I thought, well, everybody's bowing at the waist, you know. And of course, at this time, it's only the clergy that are doing this. It isn't the assembly. So everybody else in church sees this sea of white with these pointy hats. And there's me. <laughs> well, and then the bishop comes around to genuflect to the tabernacle in front of the altar, and everybody's like... <laughs> and there's me. And it's like, I believe in the real presence. I really do. I believe that is Jesus in the Eucharist. But it was just like kind of an embarrassing situation to be in. So I experience in two hours' time both the highs and the lows, the higher position and the lowest place. And life really is filled with these experiences. Sometimes the doors are open. There's a seat available at the table. We feel respected, honored, and part of the action. Then there are other times during life when the doors are closed, there isn't a seat for us available at the table, we feel disrespected, dishonored, and left out of the action. There is one banquet that matters most. And the host is Jesus Christ. Certainly at the Eucharistic banquet, every time we come to Mass, but even more so, the banquet that is in heaven. So don't worry too much if you feel like you are in a moment of life that is in the lowest place. Or even if you feel like you've been in this lowest place for many years. For Jesus says... Everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself 
will be exalted.